Hey everyone, this is Teresa from Base 10 Montessori, and today we are going to start our series on the fraction insets. And you're going to have to bear with me today because I'm still recovering from a little bit of a sinus infection, so my voice might sound a little bit off, but I'm going to push through it and we're going to start this series because this is a fantastic series. And this is really, even though it looks really simple, it's a fantastic material that's going to last you a really long time. So if you are not familiar with these metal insets or you don't have a lot of experience with them, I would say they are a great investment if you are just starting your homeschool program or you're just starting your three to six year old classroom because these insets can start at three years old and they can go into elementary. Now in elementary, we do get into more complicated fractions, but this is a really great foundation and especially if you have students with some learning disabilities that might have a lot of trouble with abstract math, this is a really great place to start. Now today we're just gonna go through the first introductory lesson for these fraction insets. Now, like I said, this starts at three years old, so you do wanna introduce this to a younger child, but it starts very, very simply. This introductory lesson is actually broken up into six different lessons. So there's a lot of different things we can do with this, in this first official lesson from the AMI album. Now today I wanna to go over a little bit of the theory before we get into the actual lesson. And there are some reasons why teachers don't use them very often in their classrooms. I often see this material get neglected in the primary environment. And I wanna kinda of go over that before we jump into the actual lesson. So let's talk about these fraction insets for a second, and let's talk about why it is you might be struggling or why it is you don't see a lot of teachers using them in the three to six year old environment. And the first reason why you might not be seeing it in the three to six year old environment very often might come down to training. Now I am AMI trained and I'm gonna go by the AMI lessons that I've received. However, I don't know what the AMS version of this lesson is. I don't know what the other training centers do as far as when they start these lessons and how they present them. So it could just be that you don't have the same lesson sequence that I have in my AMI training. So that could be one reason why you're not seeing these in a three to six year old environment. The other reason why these might not be getting used in a three to six year old environment is because they often end up on the floor. They often end up broken and they can be difficult to take off the shelf. And if that's your experience, if you are one of those teachers where the child has taken the entire tray off the shelf and the whole tray has collapsed all over the floor and there are pieces everywhere and they're getting broken, that might deter you from giving this lesson. It also might deter the student from taking this off the shelf because when we have them on display in the Montessori classroom, this is one whole tray right here. And then the second set up here is a whole nother tray and they're kind of heavy and they're kind of big and they're hard to take off the shelf and take to the table. And even though in my album, that's how they say to take it off the shelf, I would say if that is creating a problem for your classroom, if it's a problem for you as the teacher, or if you're finding that it's a problem for your students, then you need to change the way you take this off the shelf. It is more important for you to use these materials than to be perfect to your albums. Now, some teachers say your Montessori albums are perfect the way they are. You've got to teach everything exactly the way it is in your album. And to that, I would say, you know, that is forcing the child to adapt to the adult. It is not the adult that's following the child in that case. So when you're looking at what is working and what is not working in your classroom, Remember, it is your job to adapt to the needs of the student. It is not the student's job to adapt to the needs of the adult. So if you're finding that something should be changed to adapt to the needs of certain students or even all your students, then I would say do it. Do what works. Because if taking this whole tray off the shelf is not working for you, I would say it's okay to do your own thing. You might just have them go over to the shelf and take one at a time. And then they go back for the next one. Or maybe you have a little bit smaller tray and they can take two at a time instead of the whole entire tray. So I just want you to think about that as you're thinking about reasons why maybe you're having trouble with the metal insets 
or reasons why you're seeing other people not use them very much. Maybe the way that this is presented on the shelf, the physical environment or the physical way of taking off the shelf is giving you some problems. And if that's the case, I give you permission to be flexible enough to adapt your classroom to your needs. So don't worry about your album. If it's creating problems for you, then go ahead and be flexible. Adapt to the needs of your classroom. With that being said, I am going to start with the first presentation, which is the introduction. Now, when we introduce this, I'm going to tell you specifically in my album, it says, take the whole first tray off the shelf, show the child how to take it off the shelf and bring it to the table. That is something you can feel free to change as you will. So once you bring it to the table, you're going to take the first three insets. And these first lessons really don't have a lot of language with them. They're very simple. I have very limited space here, so I'm just going to slide this aside. And I'm just going to give a little bit more space. So with this first lesson, we're just going to start with the first three fraction insets. Technically, this would still be on the shelf. This whole tray would be on the shelf, and we're only taking this first set of fraction insets, and we're going to only work with the first three. There's really almost no language at all for this first lesson. Really, we're just going to show them how it works. And this first introduction is called a sensorial exploration of fractions. And that's all we're doing here is we're just giving that child a sensorial experience with fractions. We're not teaching the math. We're not doing anything direct. We're giving the experience of working with it. And that would be the first presentation. And that's really simple. We're just showing them how to use it like a puzzle. And that's why when we talk about starting fractions at three years old, this is what we're talking about. We're just giving them that impression. And so after I demonstrate this, I would invite the child to have a turn. And once they're working comfortably with these three, we'll move on to the next set. And we'll just keep on adding on. And once they're comfortable working with this first tray, you can invite them to work with the second tray, which has more pieces and is more complicated, right? So take your time, introduce it slowly. That's the entire first part of the first lesson. Now I wanna show you part two of the first lesson. So the second part of this introductory lesson is called exploration of equivalences. And this is again, very simple. And so we can show that these two halves make the same as a whole just by demonstrating that we can switch the pieces. But then we're going to move on to the next step. I want to see if I can find a piece that fits exactly in this space. Let's see what we can find that fits exactly in this space. I'm going to move this down so that you can see what I'm doing. Let's start with this. Well, that fits, but we still have some space left. Let's see if one more will fit. Nope, that won't fit exactly. So let's put that back. We want something that fits exactly in this space. Let's try the next one. Yes, that fits exactly in that space. Okay. 
and then we would keep going. We can move on to the next one and see what happens. Okay, we can fit two pieces. Can we fit the last one in? No, it doesn't fit exactly, does it? So that one doesn't work. And notice that I'm not using any language yet. I'm not using the language of wholes, halves, thirds, fourths, fifths. I'm not using that language yet. We're just exploring what fits exactly and what does not. So that's the only language you're gonna use right now. We're just exploring those simple equivalences from the same family, so we're not mixing it yet. However, the next part, part three, is to explore equivalences within mixed families. So for instance, we could go back to this, but this time you can say, well, I wanna find something that fits exactly in this space, but I wanna use a different one. Let's keep going and see what else we can find that fits in this space exactly. Nope, that doesn't fit exactly. Let's keep trying different ones. Let's try a different one. Does that fit exactly? Nope, that won't fit exactly. Let's try the next one. Oh, it's close, but not quite. Let's try the next one. Ah, that one, that one fits exactly. So we took one from here and put it here and two from here and they fit exactly. And you can keep going and you can keep exploring this in all the different ways. And that's as simple as it gets. So we started out simply showing that we can work with this like a puzzle. Then the next step is to show the equivalences within the same family and then equivalences with the mixed families. Now the fourth part of this introductory lesson is called designs. And this is really just simple design work. We're gonna take the whole right here. We're just gonna take this one. We're not using the language yet. We're just gonna take this one out and you know what we can start by maybe taking one of these and making designs within the inset and so we can make a simple design within the inset so the first lesson is working it just like a puzzle showing how to take it out and put it back in. The second lesson is simple equivalences within the same family. The third lesson is the mixed equivalences. The fourth lesson of the introductory lesson, the fourth part of the introductory lesson is making designs. And really they can be free to make whatever designs they want as long as they know how to put them back, right? So you could do even mixed families for your designs. Now the fifth lesson is to make a design on the table. So really they can do whatever they want. And they can make any design they want. They can do Anything that looks interesting, like I said, as long as they know how to put it back and they can show that they can take care of the materials and work with it appropriately, then their idea for designs really could be anything. You could switch it up. Show them how to make any design they want. And what is this preparing them for? We know that we're working with fractions here, but what else is going on when we're working with this design work? Well, first of all, it's a preparation for art, right? 
But the other thing that it's a preparation for, an indirect preparation for, is geometry. Not only are we working with the fractions, but we're preparing the child's mind for design work and we're preparing it for geometry. And then the last part of this lesson, the sixth part of the introductory lesson is designs on paper. So whatever they design here, they can go ahead and put on a paper. And once they have their design, they can go ahead and trace it. They can get out their pencil and paper and they can trace whatever design they want and they can color it in. So we have six different parts of the introductory lesson that we just went over today. And all of this begins around the age of three and a half. So don't be afraid to get the metal insets out. Don't be afraid to work with them with really young children. And if you're finding that there's some difficulties going on in your classroom with how they're picking it up, how they're using it, be flexible. Remember, you're there to adapt to the students' needs. And if you have students, even just one student, that cannot pick up this tray, it is your job to adapt to the students' needs. And I think it's important to have this reminder that Montessori really is ideal and the albums are really beautiful and don't need to be altered for children who can auto-educate, for children who don't have any type of disability or learning exceptions, right? However, when you're finding a child that can't automatically educate themselves, when you're finding that there's a child who, who can't auto-educate, who does need that one-on-one -on -one help, or maybe they have a physical disability that keeps them from picking these things up, that there are things that we need to change in our albums to adapt to students. And Maria Montessori was not opposed to that. Matter of fact, she herself did that with her students, and there are pictures of her working with the brown stairs on a table instead of on the floor. It's okay to be flexible with these materials. If you are AMI trained and something in your album after all these years isn't working for you, it is your job, it's your obligation to find a way to adapt your album to the student's needs. This is a great starting point. Everything we learn in our albums is a great starting point, but it is not your ending point. It's just the beginning. Our albums are just the beginning and it is your job to take them further with your students. So it's a great starting point great foundation, but most importantly, the most important thing you can do is use these materials. Use them properly, of course, right? We don't want them abused. We don't want them playing with them. We want the work to be purposeful, but there's a lot of ways to be purposeful and also adapt our albums. So I just want to encourage you that if the metal insets are giving you any problems, that it's okay to be creative with it. It's okay to Think outside the box and meet the needs of your students. And you can help your students in more ways than what your album shows you. So just keep that in mind. And I just want to encourage you to keep going, keep adapting, and keep helping your students. Because the most important thing is that the materials click with them. And not that we are perfect with our albums. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. This is the first part of the series. So I will be making more videos. And we're going to go through all the lessons that lead up to addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with a common denominator. So we're going to be doing the math with this eventually. But we're going to work our way up to that. And that's why these metal insets are great. Because we can start very simply with three-year-olds. And then we can work our way up to kindergarten and even first grade with these lessons. So that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video.